How is it going? I'm having a bit of an off day. Uh, I just finished up work doing laundry, but uh, it's going to get better because we're going to talk about something today. Always drink water. So in this video, we're going to talk about the expectations and the reality of van life or RV life and basically some of the stuff that I've like come across and have I don't know what I expected out of this and what actually happened with it so I'd say the main thing that I got into this for was saving money and just getting out of that like grind of like always having to pay like the mortgage or in other people's turns, rent or something like that. Um, I think uh, what I expected was I was going to be saving a lot more. But in reality, what I'm actually saving is uh, a bit less than what I expected. Um, I've noticed my fuel, I go through that more. And it's also made me realize that uh, my spending was a bit out of hand before. And going into this life, if you're spending still out of hand, you're still going to be spending a lot more, even if you're in this lifestyle. You're not spending so much on like items and stuff because obviously you don't have room for it, but you're spending on other stuff. So like trips and other things like that. The key to this, if you actually want to save money is when you go on those trips and stuff is to always have that frugal mindset and always be thinking about spending less and then you're able to go on more trips or in my case save money to go on a big trip <laughs> when i first got into this uh lifestyle and i was living out of here full time um the one thing i knew there was going to be some new expenses like uh more maintenance on the truck and everything I had a mechanical issue right away with the truck and I, it cost me about a thousand bucks to get the, it was basically an injector went on it and I couldn't uh, diagnose it myself. So when they diagnosed it, I said, yeah, go ahead and just replace it. Um, and they did. It's not a hard job, but it still cost a thousand parts are 500 and then the labor was another 500. So and talking about money and still on money and everything like I've spent I, I'm not I'm not gonna lie I'm saving like a lot of money doing this like don't get me wrong you are going to save money doing this but if you're going into this and you have a spending problem and you're not able to get that under control this lifestyle is not gonna fix it um, you need to make sure Make sure you're ready to stop spending if you actually want to get out of debt or want to start saving a lot of money. Make sure you're actually budgeting and sticking to it to actually be able to save money doing this. 
And that brings me to the next uh, expectation. This wasn't an expectation of mine, but I think it's an expectation of a lot of people is that you can't work a nine to five job while doing this. That is completely false. I'm doing it right now and I'm like thriving with doing it. It's actually been, it just works really well. The best thing about it is like my stress of actually like being at work used to be like up here because I needed the job. Now that I have like a bunch of savings and everything, it's more like right here. I, I'm happier to go to work now because I'm doing it for me and I'm doing it for a purpose. I'm not doing it because I have, have, I absolutely have to. Now, by all means, everyone needs to basically work. If you want to make money, you have to work, right? So I'm not saying that if I, I expected to not have to work doing this, I didn't know if, how working a nine to five job was going to work doing this. And now I see it as like, there's no difference to it. So long as I'm able to go, I'm a shower every day kind of guy. So, so long as I'm able to go to the gym every morning, which I do anyways, I'm able to shower and then go into work. And it's like, I don't know. And people say that like, you can't have a routine right now. I'm living the routine. It's very routine. And I'm like, I don't, I'm really happy with this. <laughs> like definitely thinking about this. Um, I can go anywhere and get into a nine to five job working like this, but for sure, like if you're thinking that uh, you can't work this, do this kind of lifestyle and like work a nine to five job, I'm here to tell you, you definitely can. And if you're someone that uh, thinks you like, you can do seasonal work too and stuff, but I'd almost say that like, the nine to five is going to pay more. And I don't know, um, if you're in a really good area, it can set you up really good. And I think, uh, you definitely could go to doing a nine to five job and then work for about a year and then bank a whole lot of money with this lifestyle, saving it, and then go do a massive trip and take like, a take like the summer or the winter or whatever off. And my coworkers seem to, I think, yeah, every last one of my coworkers know I live in this thing. Um, I don't know about the higher ups, but I'm sure they all have speculations, but, <laughs> um, so far I haven't had anyone like say anything rude about it or anything like that. Like no one really cares, which brings me to the next topic. What do people think about me living in this. I have yet to meet a single person who actually cares. Nobody cares. Quite literally, if they care, if it's really bothering them that much that you live in this, then they obviously don't have enough issues in their life. Honestly, everyone's out and about. They're doing their own thing. They're living their own lives. They have their own issues. They don't care that you're living your life a certain way. They care about your well-being. They're probably worried, oh, are you okay? And if you say, yeah, I'm thriving, I love this. They're like, okay, I'm happy for you. 99% of the time, that's all someone's gonna say. They got their own stuff to worry about, right? Like they got kids, they got jobs, they got mortgages, they got rent to pay, they got all that stuff. They don't care that old Kevin's living in his truck camper and just camping out and living his best life. It's just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's so funny to think that like, I don't know. I, when I first went into this, that's the thing that worried me so much is like, oh God, what if one of my friends see me, one of my old friends see me living in this or something. And uh, then I'm gonna have to try to explain to them this whole situation that I'm not like homeless or something. I'm houseless. <laughs> and honestly, like I've had people come up to me and be like, Hey, do you live in that thing? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, that's awesome. And it just blows their mind. And they're just like, it's yeah. And then they just, I don't know. I haven't had many people like come up and ask me more questions. I'm open to answering like a lot more questions, but most people just think it's awesome. So you're just, you're doing something out of the norm and 
I think either people are going to be like, they're either going to wonder if everything's okay and be concerned for you and like have, I think they just want, they care. Either they really, really care and they're concerned for your well being, which they have nothing to be concerned about, but yeah, or there's someone that knows about this lifestyle and then they actually see you living in this and they're just, they're excited for you and they think it's pretty cool actually. As much as I thought people were going to be concerned about me living in this and uh, I was going to get a lot more flack about it, it's been just people being awesome and just super like, they almost come over and they're just almost sound almost envious about it. Like, and by all means, uh, there is some envious factors to this. Like, I'm, I have the freedom to go wherever I want. Um, I don't have a house holding me down or like stuff like that. I'm very fortunate to be where I am when I feel very grateful for where I am in life. And I feel very grateful for this opportunity I get to be living in this truck camper and that I get to do what I want to do. It's like we've all had our bad days where we think uh, things in life are just not going that great. And then finally, someday you get to that point where things actually start going and you just believe in the process and eventually you'll get there. And I, that's where I am right now. And I'm finally at that point where I'm like really happy to be where I am. Yeah, after uh, that little talk there, um, people just don't care. So I don't worry about that anymore. And I actually get a little bit excited to like tell people that I live in a truck camper. <laughs> but okay, on to the next topic. Now, the next one is, this can be different because my laundry's done one moment. Well, it's not done. I have to go change it over, but I'll be back. Okay. We are back. The situation is different between men and women. I'm going to talk on mine because we're talking about what my expectations were when going into this. So we're talking about uh, basically like scary situations. So someone, well, even I would even go as far as saying just someone knocking on your door at night and telling you to leave. Um, if someone knocks on your door at night, it's a scary situation, no matter. Um, and that brings me to, I've had one time where I was up in the morning. It was really early. I think, uh, actually it wasn't that early. It was about 7 AM. Um, but the sun was, there was no sun. It was in the middle of December. Someone knocked on my door and I was, uh, I was quite a ways out of town, but not far enough that someone could walk over. So, and I'm parked in the spot there and I would think I was sitting inside, uh, editing a video and all of a sudden I got a knock on my door and I was just like, ah, oh, the cops must be here telling me to leave. Okay. So I go open the door and yeah, it's a random guy and he's in the, it's minus 20 outside and he's out there walking and he gives me a spiel about how him and his girlfriend are in a fight or whatever. And he was just making sure I was okay. And I was like, yeah, dude, I'm all good. And like, he seemed nice enough and everything. Um, whether or not he was knocking on the door to see if anyone was in there is another story. I'm going to go with, he would just cared, but, uh, either way, like being a guy, it's not as bad having someone come up there. I mean, like, especially I open the door there and I have the high ground. Remember that you always want the high ground, just like Obi-Wan. Um, I believe most people are good. I think the one thing about this is like a lot of, a lot of times you think that, uh, I'm in literally a truck camper. It's pretty obvious that if I'm in the middle of nowhere park somewhere, there's probably someone sleeping in here. I think most people are gonna, I think I could be wrong about this, but I think most criminals are going to look at that and be like, Oh, I'm, that looks like it could be a difficult situation. If I wake someone that's in there, I'm not going to mess with it. And for the most part, I think that is pretty good. And my other, my other situation with that too, is I avoid cities and I don't park in cities. 
Um, I really don't want to. Like, I'm talking, like, bigger cities, like Edmonton, Vancouver, anything like that. I'm not going to even go... I'm not going to participate in that. I'm just not going to put myself in a situation where someone could actually come up to the door and try to, like, steal stuff out of the truck or something. Like, my whole life's in here. Like, I'm not going to risk that. So, what I like to do is I like to stay out in the forest or stay on the outskirts of the on the outskirts or go to a smaller town and stay at like the uh, Walmart or something like that. Like that feels better to me than parking somewhere that it comes down to situational awareness. If you park somewhere and you got a bad feeling about it, leave, just leave. Don't even, don't even second, don't second guess yourself. Just leave because odds are it's probably a bad it is a bad idea to park there and you should trust your gut. So I haven't had any issues really other than that, which is funny because that was like my first week that I had that person come knock on the door and it did freak me out a bit, but like at this point now I'm just like, okay, whatever. And I'm, and I don't get too worried about like people driving by or anything like that. Um, like I said, most people are good and uh, I have to say I don't half the people even notice me there. So, yeah. And that brings me on to the last thing. And this kind of goes with the 9 to 5 job. Um, your travel. Now, how I've done this is I'm working a 9 to 5 job and I'm just saving a bunch of money so I can go on a larger trip. What I expected out of this was I was going to be able to, like, take off every weekend and go places and whatnot. But I work a 9 to 5 job and I want to save money so I can go and take a larger trip for the summer or when I first started this to go and go snowboarding. So after I uh, realized I wasn't able to, I wasn't going to be able to go on my big snowboarding trip and the season would just wasn't right for it. I was had all these plans to go do all these smaller trips, but my nine to five only allows me to take off so much time. And the other fact is too, like you can only get so far away from your, if you have to be back somewhere for something, you only get so far away and you do still have chores that you have to get done on the weekends. Also working on nine to five. I know the old ball and chain, right? The other side of that is working the nine to five is you're able to save a lot of money to go on a much longer trip. Like I'm basically taking the entire summer off because I chose this lifestyle to save money for it and be able to do it. I think a lot of people expect since your home is on wheels, you're able to just go and drive to the next town over or whatever. But the hard part with that too is like, you don't know where to park in these other towns. So you're constantly trying to figure out where you can park and all this. And then like, if you have to be back for a nine to five job or you have other commitments like that, you, uh, I tend to stay in one area for a lot longer and that's not a bad thing like there's something to be said about traveling slow and especially in these times with a lot of with the price of fuel now it's definitely a better idea to travel slow so this is my probably my hardest part with planning this trip now is like i'm thinking how i used to think when i took off two weeks at work I'll figure out all these places to go and just cruise right through them and go as far as I can in as little time as possible and get to all these places. And you feel very rushed and there's like no room for error. If you see something along the way, it's not in the schedule. You can't stop. That's gone now. I'm gonna have a bunch of time to myself. I'm gonna be able to go do that. I can't wait to be going down these highways cruising 10 under the speed limit and just see something cool and just be able to stop and go there and hang out. And then all of a sudden, if I feel like I don't want to drive anymore for the day and I've only drove one hour that day, I can just find somewhere to camp and hang out for the day. I can the next day just go. If I find somewhere cool to camp and I just want to stay there for a while, I can just do that. I don't have to, I don't have like a deadline to get somewhere. And the best part about it is when I take a rest day and I want to stop driving, I'm saving money because I'm not using fuel. It just makes more sense to 
travel slow like that. But I get that if you're working a nine to five job, you can't do that. You have to have some sort of plan because you only have a limited amount of time. And by all means, I do have a limited amount of time too doing this bigger trip, but it's like the scale that I have for time is incredible. It's, it's nothing I've ever seen before. Like I thinking, I'm thinking just about, yeah, basically three months off. It's absolutely phenomenal. I'm just, I'm so stoked about it. It's not even funny, but <laughs> uh, I get off so much off topic about this stuff. Okay, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. A travel, we're talking about travel, that's what we're talking about. So you're expecting this lifestyle that you're gonna be able to travel nonstop and everything, and that's just not true, unless you have a lot of money saved. So work that nine to five job and save that money so you can travel as much as you want. Or if you work remote and you're one of those people, um, yeah, you can travel as much as you want, just stay in service, I guess. Or get Starlink. <laughs> uh, I'm a little envious of you guys. You know that? So with all that being said. Um, if you're thinking about going to this lifestyle. And you have a bunch of expectations. You're going to be hit with a lot of realities. Um, I definitely. There's going to be some that are better. That. They're going to blow your expectations away. And you're going to actually be like thrilled about it. I feel like, I think I touched on it a little bit in this, that there was a lot of stuff that I actually, I thought was going to be a lot worse than it actually is. And yeah, it's, I, I'm going to have to make another video about that. There's so much, so much good about this life. There's also a lot of stuff that's a lot harder than living in a normal house. But as for me, like, I've never been, do I say it? Do I say that I've never been happier? Like genuinely just talking about it and just like, telling you guys about it like it's just I've never been happier the doing something it's it just feels so right it feels so good and I'm absolutely in love with this lifestyle that being said I hope you all enjoyed this video and like and subscribe you know it I'll catch you on the next one later